Henry Morton Stanley. His name will become synonymous with African exploration. Yet his journey beginning March 21st, 1871 was not just a quest for discovery, but a testament to human tenacity and the ferocious thirst for knowledge in the 19th century. Europe's fascination with Africa in the late 1800s was a heady mix of scientific curiosity, economic ambition, and imperialistic fervor. The continent remained largely uncharted. Its vast interior beckoning adventurers like Stanley to uncover its secrets. Stanley, a former destitute Welshman turned intrepid journalist, embarked on his most ambitious expedition. Before setting sail from the strategic port of Zanzibar, Stanley meticulously planned every aspect of his expedition. Armed with supplies, rifles, and a team of indigenous porters, he sought not just to explore, but to unravel the mysteries of the African continent. Stanley's own troubled past, marked by abandonment and hardship, drove his relentless pursuit of the unknown. As his caravan plunged into the heart of Africa, they faced a multitude of challenges. Treacherous terrain, unforgiving wildlife, and the specter of diseases like malaria and dysentery. It all tested their resolve at every turn. The expedition's encounters with local tribes added another layer of complexity. There was quite often a lot of tension and a need for negotiation. During his expedition, Stanley meticulously recorded his observations, mapping uncharted territories and documenting the flora, fauna, and indigenous cultures that he encountered. Despite some really tough conditions, his team covered remarkable distances, traversing vast swaths of land all over Africa. Lesser-known figures such as the number of porters employed or the amount of supplies consumed underscore the sheer magnitude of this quest. His expedition left a mark on the map of Africa, providing invaluable insights into its landscapes and people. But his legacy is not without controversy. While celebrated in Western circles as a pioneering explorer, his methods and interactions with local tribes are still scrutinized till today. Some critics argue that his expeditions were a precursor to European imperialism and the exploitation of Africa's resources. His expedition to Africa in 1871 wasn't just about adventure and exploration, but it also defined what became the hallmark of the 19th century. Now, let's go even a little bit deeper. The Belgian king, Leopold II, was interested in Stanley's report on the Congo. He hired Stanley to claim territory in the Congo on his behalf. Between 1879 and 1884, Stanley attempted to establish Belgian bases and build roads there. Stanley's work demonstrated that there is money to be made in the Congo. Exploration of Africa's riches sparked the scramble for Africa, in which European nations began competing for a portion of the continent. Stanley embarked on his final voyage in 1886. He was assigned to rescue Emin Pasha, the governor of Equatorial Sudan, also known as Eduard Schneitzer. Emin Pasha sought assistance to secure his reign following a modest rebellion. He did not want to be rescued and compelled to leave his station. Stanley had other reasons for traveling on this assignment, though. He wished to strengthen King Leopold's Congo state in the West and the newly established Imperial British East Africa Company in the East. Stanley also planned to acquire Emin Pasha's valuable ivory stockpile. Stanley returned to Europe and was greeted as a hero. However, he was accused of forging the letters and notebooks that he brought back. One of the most famous things that Stanley ever became known for, though, goes back just a little bit in the story. 
It has to do with David Livingstone. He was the first European to circumnavigate the continent from west to east. He discovered Zambezi, the Victoria Falls, and a number of large Central African lakes. His articles regarding these expeditions on the slave trade gained a lot of attention at the time. Livingstone, he embarked on three large excursions throughout much of Africa, hoping to bring Christianity, commerce, and civilization to the continent. Livingstone, he became seriously ill in the jungles in the beginning of 1869. He was rescued by Arab traders who gave him medicine and transported him to an Arab outpost. In 1869, the New York Herald recruited Henry Morton Stanley to organize an expedition to find Livingstone. Stanley arrived in Zanzibar in early 1871 and traveled 700 miles through Tanzania before meeting Livingstone in November at Ujiji. Stanley's accomplishments captivated the public at the time. Mark Twain wrote, When I contrast what I've achieved in my measurably brief life with what Stanley has achieved in his possible briefer one, the effect is to sweep utterly away the ten-story edifice of my own self-appreciation and leave nothing behind but the cellar. Stanley was seen by Antov Chekhov as a stubborn, invincible, striving towards a certain goal, no matter what privations, dangers, and temptations for personal happiness, personifying the highest moral strength. However, Henry Morton Stanley's reputation did suffer over the next century as historians attacked his early 1880s affiliation with King Leopold II, the greedy Belgian monarch whose ivory traffickers would later serve as direct inspiration for Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. As colonialism waned and Victorian character building fell out of favor, Stanley was portrayed as a nasty explorer, a vicious imperialist who chopped and shot his way across Africa. Stories change over time as cultures evolve. Henry Morton Stanley. He passed away May 10th, 1904, at the age of 63. He died in London, England, of pneumonia-related complications. And despite any of the controversies surrounding his voyages, Henry Morton Stanley's adventurous spirit and legacy as an explorer are still taught and acknowledged till today. These are Interesting Things with J.C.